life's right It's all in life Gotta keep your head up and keep it straight No time for living a life Gotta keep it moving till you get it right That's right It's all in life Gotta keep your head up and keep it straight No time to be living a lie You can make it if you try As I said, welcome, welcome all. You are tuned into Context Matters. This week we're going to talk about situation ethics. It's a very interesting topic, and I'm going to tell you why it's interesting. It's interesting for um, the simple fact that we need to appreciate the dynamics between that which is morally good, what is always acceptable and what isn't, but more so in the context of understanding when it is that people are to be morally right or if it is that like, <laughs> Stacey said I'm late. No, you know, I was having some technical difficulties, so um, I'm going to apologize for that. And just pretty much to say, you know, just make sure. Um, is everybody hearing me clearly? If you're hearing me clearly, um, that's important to me because um, I certainly don't want to. I don't want to hear me can't hear or you can't see me. Those those two things are those three things are important as it is right now. So talk to me. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Yeah, loud and clear. Good, good, good. So respect to all. I, I, I must say that um, it's going to be a very interesting show. But so many things happen in this space. Um, I'm going to start by just bigging up everybody as I see you. You know, um, Young's, Echo, Angela, big up yourself, Dion Sinclair, Valerie, Walton, Paulette Francis, Joycelyn Williams, Angie Reed. Vivian Francis, Bula, Princess Nikki, all right, big up yourself, Smith, and every, every, everybody who is, is early and, and is criticizing me and telling me I'm late. I want to say big up to all of you. Now, my TikTok crew, special welcome to all of you, 50 Cent. I don't know why I see your, your, um, your account live more than anybody else on LeBron Boss, Big Up, um, Errol Green, Sexy Toya, and all the fancy names I'm seeing. Um, big Up Yourself as well. So the Amazing Grace, why are you troubling me about um, KFC? No, I wasn't eating KFC. Who eats KFC in the middle of the day? Uh, obviously, I sat, but we're going to talk about something. <laughs> Leave that alone. Um, but no, I wasn't doing that just now. Similarly, in terms of in terms of the um, in terms of the, the show, I was saying earlier that so many things are happening in the space. Um, for instance, one of, one, of, one, of, one of the key things, a particular person I heard was looking for me. Um, and I, I found it so interesting because I don't think I want their number until um, them turn big shot again. And what I mean by big shot is in till they hold the highest office in in the land wherever, whichever land we're speaking of. But I know, I know, I know you all must have heard who was looking for me. Um, and I was wondering also if any of you had decided to pass on my number because I don't receive the call yet. But I just use it. I'm taking this medium. <laughs> I'm taking this medium to ensure that um, I acknowledge that. Cartel's the finally free. I think I need to money. hire his lawyers because I don't want to go to prison. They did an exceptionally great job. Big up to ISAT Buchanan and the team. I think need to hire you guys. Um, yeah, so just in case you never hear it, um, you, you know who, the, who who was that? Let me let me let me let me play that back. 
Vibes cartels finally free. I think I need to hire his lawyers because I don't want to go to prison. They did an exceptionally great job. Big up to ISAT Buchanan and the team. I think need to hire you guys. Um. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> we said why for that? Yeah, <laughs> you need to go get, you need to go help Trump. All right, yeah. So anyway, so, so many things happen in this space, as I was saying, but um, I want to, I really want to talk about this situation ethics. It's so, it's a very important mechanism. It's a, it's um, significant to say the least. Um, I really hope that people will enjoy this particular life and, and is, is a lot to learn from it and we'll engage in discussion. Now, I want to tell you that I really, really went out of my way to um, try to get, what I would I say, um, the technology so that the phone, the phone, the phone calls so we can be a little bit more interactive. That's why I was late because once again, um, this is not one of the areas I'm the brightest in, but I did I did invest into the technology, and from the technology, I still didn't get through this week to 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 be able to um do the phone thing. But I promise you that I'm gonna work it out because I need to hear from some of you. You know, some of you are really really when they're doing a lot. Um, so let me. Start off by saying, yeah, and when you when when you invest in technology, um, yeah, I really when you invest in the technology, you 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 tend to um, discover a lot a lot of stuff, you know. And let me t let me tell you one of the stuff that I also realized that. I found out from the technology. Um, you can have good fun with technology, so somebody confirmed. This is what I discovered from technology. You literally can just start a show and start to tell people, you know, how interesting it is to have your own show and you can post and present to people and say to yourself, hey, I am a blogger, and I know everything about law, even though I'm not an actual lawyer, but I tell people that I'm a lawyer and stuff like that. But when I post this video, everybody's gonna mash up. The place is gonna mash up. Because today you guys all understood that I am the blogger. <laughs> anyway, so you get the point. You do get the point. I'm not saying no names. I'm just saying technology can, can make you realize how silly people are. But it is what it is. Um, I'm also trying to... Um, I, got, I got a call from Keisha. Well, a message from Keisha, who is my... Um, she is my moderator on TikTok. And apparently, I need to fix a setting. So... Once again, when you're technologically deficient, you find yourself um, in all kind of distraction. Is the is the is the wrong word? But let me let me see if I can fix this thing. Um, go in here. No, 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 not there. Um, try here. No. Just bear with me. Almost there. All right, I think it's this. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right. It's fixed now. So we can move on. So listen, I know they're laughing, you know. Um, <laughs> but I don't know who tell them to let me get this technology because anytime I don't like something, I'm going to go right there. All right. So, um, Let's go. TikTok, we're well, not hearing, and they can't hear this thing, but um, go over to Isaac McKellen 5419. I promise you, it's lit over there. I know y'all on the TikTok, but y'all have to go on the live as well if we're going to get some of the jokes. So, yeah. So, let's kick this off. Um, situation ethics. Listen, I'm, this is hilarious, but I know, I don't know. Y'all know what, y'all know what it is. Yeah. 
So with the situation ethics now, um, I want to start off by just giving you a basic definition of what the situa- what situation ethics is, um, its purpose, why are we even talking about it. Um, let, let's put things in context. They say there's a time and place for everything. Um, this week, well, last week to this week, very interesting. I know last week I was talking about it, but I'm really now in a situation where I'm going to tell you um, the biggest case of my career um, is, the word is not going to be interesting, but achieving the quashing of the conviction for the biggest case of my career is difficult to allow people to minimize such an achievement. I'm certainly not going to minimize it and I'm not going to act like it wasn't a big achievement. What happens though is something I noticed in local media, local media being Jamaican media, not one media house reported that um, I spoke at the Privy Council. Not one. There was not one article that um, that a, a, a young Jamaican lawyer um, with dreadlocks actually spoke at the Privy Council. If there is any significance at all to that, that wasn't um, communicated in no newspaper. In fact, there was one um, there was one program that I saw, and the reporter was asking a senior attorney. How comes it is that only the white lawyers spoke, the English lawyers spoke, and no Jamaican lawyers spoke? And it was then after being on Rattigan's show and speaking to the high priest, and he was explaining that, you know, black people really are white. And that's when I realized that I was white. And so I wasn't offended because when they said that no, 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 no local lawyer, no Jamaican lawyer spoke, only the white lawyers, and I spoke, I realized it was a validation that I was actually white. So I just move on from that. But what I did notice is that when it comes to, to me, per, per se, there is this um, fascination where people simply are ready to accentuate the sarcasm so if you're not if you're not on context matters and you're not you're not following and 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 sharing and keeping up with what's happening you'll just randomly see a clip and think that i am doing the most for lack of a better word yeah i'm doing the most so that i was able to hear sit hear stuff you know the whole thing about you my new line i haven't launched a website yet but I am now um, selling guard rings and you can get any color stone that you want. You can get it in silver. You can get it in gold. You know, all that stuff will vanish away, but a good education will never decay. But in, 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 a, in any event, I, my new line is coming out and feel free to, to send me a message on any other social media platforms on how to get yours because without it, apparently you can't survive. Right? So anyway, in that vein, we're going to now speak about the situation ethics. So that introduction was pretty much to give you, to bring you up to speed with what is the, what is it that we're talking about? So when we talk about situation ethics, what we really are saying is that the right things, the right thing to do depends on the situation. So in a situa- in situation ethics, right and wrong depends upon the situation. So there are no universal moral rules or rights. Each case is unique and it deserves a unique solution. Um, situation ethics rejects prefabricated decisions and pragmatism, positivism, re- relativism, and relativism and personalism are the four working principles, which means to be reasonably sure the act you take will work and provide the most loving consequences, accepting situational ethics as a matter of faith and not reason. Each situation must be relative to love and bring about the most loving result. And finally, the needs of people come first rather than a set of rules which are prescriptive rules. 
any thoughts on that? And I'm looking, I'm looking through the comments right now to see if there's any thoughts on that, which I just said. If you need me to repeat it, I'll happily repeat it. But I just want to ensure that we are looking at that, looking in looking at what it is when it comes to situation ethics. And we'll we'll address that, you know. We'll address if the situation um give rise for people to resign, step down, um people to walk out of parliament, people to stand on the roadside and give speeches, um, people to speak about, um, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll get there. All right. So Geo, Geo Heaven has asked me to repeat and I'm going to gladly repeat because I know the material is heavy, you know, but I, I am on a journey to uplift and 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 introduce critical thinking as an aspect of of the thought process for just everybody in general and we need we we need to get there so i'm going to take my time again the right thing to do depends on the situation that's the starting point that's situation ethics well in situations ethics in situation ethics, right and wrong depend upon the situation. So it's almost like an oxymoron. But there are no universal moral rules or rights. So each case is unique and deserves a unique solution. And situation ethics rejects fabricated decisions. And pragmatism, positivism, relativism... And personalism are the four working principles, which mean to be reasonably sure the act you take will work and provide the most loving consequences. Accepting situational ethics as a matter of faith and not reason, each situation must be relative to love and bring about the most loving result. And finally, the needs of people come first rather than a set of rules, prescriptive rules. So, blessings, everybody, if you're just joining. Um, we are talking about situation ethics. And I just pretty much gave the what, what it is, what situation ethics is, and a general rule on how it works. Um, today, we, if you're not spiritual and you're not biblical, you're going to learn some spirituality and, and biblicality today. Um, and if you, if you, for whatever reason, don't, don't want to hear it from me. I can call someone who people sheepishly believe nonsense and maybe possibly they can help. Anyway, so what is a simple, let's, let's talk about what does situation ethics argue? Well, situation ethics argues that there is one moral rule that we should do whatever is the most loving thing and that this needs to be applied to each unique situation we face. So there is one, as a, again, one moral rule. And uh, we should do whatever is the most loving thing. That's the moral rule. And that this needs to be applied to each unique situation that we face. So let me give you a simple example of situation ethics, and then we break it down. Um, okay, I'm I'm glad somebody said that. Um, I was kind of wondering if tell me if this one is better. Um, no, this one actually looks worse. So let's just continue with this one and let's see if let's see if that is that better yes no dark why well, if we just work with the dark today and i'm because i'm one of one it's too dark all right they are both dark yeah i'm seeing that it looks dark TikTok me dark. All right. Um, yeah, I'll try to sort it out by the break to see if um I can do something better. But 
we have to just work with this for now. Um, the next, the other thing that I can do is to see how best if I reduce the lighting, but then in here going to look like the shade room. Hold on. Nope. See that it's even worse now. Hmm. Nope. Let me see. Walking out of Parliament, wearing worse. Good evening, I said. Yeah, this is worse. So. I'm going to blink in right now. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Best I can do for now. Yeah. So what what we... So the simple example of situation ethics. Here, here's what it should look like. Um, if the actions change depending on the situation and making something that might have been immoral before now moral, a good example is pretty much killing a mass murderer before they are going to kill hundreds of people. So you snipers do get the job to take out the, the school shooter or the mass murderer so to prevent them from killing more people. So it's almost like a defense of necessity. It only arises in, in those um, particular situations. And there was a case of um, A, a minor, the, a, the conjoined twins. And through, 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 through that where they they said the necessary evil that you have to to do is not necessarily to kill the parasitic twin but to save the one that you could could save um yeah so that was that that's interesting the next thing is um what is the difference between situation ethics and natural law i want to talk about that because Natural law, right as it is right now, there's no respect for natural law in many societies because people think that we've gone from, from that. But natural law is the right to a fair hearing, um, the right that you need to be heard if, if adverse decisions are going to be go against you, are going to go against you. And a lot of times state actors, they don't, they don't necessarily agree um, Yeah, they don't necessarily agree and they don't like natural law. And so you usually have to, by virtue of judicial review, sue them and you might find yourself at the highest court because it becomes technical and it's a personality clash and conflict within um, throughout the court system. And yeah. But the, de the, decision of the decisions of natural moral law are rules to be obeyed. Those who follow situation ethics are following a system that is generally teleological. So its moral decisions are based on the situation where the correct action is to bring about the most loving co um, consequences. Well, how about a situation where natural law is where everybody deserves the same kind of treatment? Situation ethics can be problematic in situation, in circumstances where if you take things by a situational or case by case basis, and if you apply it to the law, you can see where because um, you, the individual, is before the court, a different rule applies to you. And then you get stuff like, um, let me not use myself, but I wonder when you see the former prime minister of Jamaica, PJ Patterson, he puts out a whole press release to say that judge, the judges, would have gotten it wrong in the car in the, in the vibes cartel case from 2014 because they had a ruling from 1983 where our judges set down the law as exactly as the privy council did exactly in terms of when it comes to poison on a jury bias um in relation to the jury and how it affects people 
this is and so then it one wonders if we are using the natural law if we're using the constitution or we're using situation ethics and saying the a departure from the from what we know is the law was taking place into um into the into the that particular case and here it is now um one of the most erudite lawyers in Jamaica along with his colleague do, does a joint statement to say that this should never have happened because the law was decided from 1983. That's some 41 years ago. And um, certainly, certainly in, 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 that, in that aspect or, or as one is to look at it, you would definitely see that on a situation ethics, this is a situation where it's adverse to the defendants in in that particular case a departure from what what would have been natural law so that's the distinction between between the two um situation ethics now you see in ethics and and theology the position that moral decision making is contextual or dependent on a set of circumstances situation situation ethics holds that moral judgment must be made within the context of the entirety of a situation and that all normative features of a situation must be viewed as a whole so the guiding framework for moral decisions making it stated variously as that of acting in the most loving way to maximize harmony and reduce discord or to enrich human existence. Um, so situation ethics was developed by an American Anglican theological, which is, his name is Joseph F. Fletcher. And his books, his book, Situation Ethics or The New Morality was published in 1966. And it arose from his objection to both moral absolutism which is the view that there are fixed universal moral principles that have binding authority in all circumstances. <clears throat> and then you have moral relativism and the view that there are no fixed moral principles at all. So Fletcher-based situation ethics on the general Christian norm of brotherly love, which is expressed in different ways in different situations. And he applied this to issues of doctrine. For example, if one holds to the absolute wrongness of abortion, then one will never allow for abortion, no matter what the circumstances within which the pregnancy occurs. So Fletcher held that such an absolute position pays no attention to the complexity and uniqueness of each situation and can result in a callous and inhumane way of dealing with the problem. So on the other hand, if there are no principles at all, then the decisions is reduced to nothing more than what one decides to do the moment with no real moral implications involved. Rather, Fletcher held within the context of the complexities of the situation, one should come to the most loving or right decisions as to what to do. Now, Fletcher's view was influential in Christian communities, both in America and Europe for decades, reaching its peak in the 1980s, after which it began to wane. His ethical framework bore strong affinities with the version of pragmatism proposed by the American philosopher, social reformer, and educator John Dewey, who characterized his position as instrumentalism. In Dewey's framework, moral principles are tools or instruments that are used because they work in resolving the conflicts within complex situation in the most harmonious way for all those involved. Well, these principles are experimental hypotheses that are constantly subject to ongoing verification or revisions by the demands of the unique conditions of experience. So this view is opposed to the absolutist understanding of fixed rules as inherently valid and universally applicable to all situations. So there being no exceptions, it also is opposed to the relativist understanding that there are no normative guidelines, but only individual judgments concerning particular cases, and that there is no moral justification for evaluating one moral claim as being actually superior to another. 
So <clears throat> here's the reality. And um, I invite you to agree or disagree where, where this is concerned. And it, it pretty much looks like this. If it is that absolute, mor absolute morality would be a fallacy, and I get to it in terms of if Jamaica is a Christian society or you find yourself in a society where religion um, is, is followed, you would see that um, absolute mor mor morality is completely, completely not a workable concept. So situation uh, ethics has its value in terms of finding the balance or finding that space where you can actually find justification in decisions made that actually assist or affects society as a whole. And it also will affect the individual. Um, and so let's, let's, let's look at it this way. Um, three are the, all the things that happened this week um, and how people feel about it. We have... Um, Murder still happening, rape still happening, crime still happening, birth still happening, death still happening. How do we assess situations? We have persons who are to be prosecuted, not being prosecuted. We have um, the illicit six in parliament that's not being named and everybody's okay with it. And people are saying that the illicit six doesn't exist anymore. And then we have a situation where um, out of nowhere, out of nowhere, absolutely nowhere, it was said that, um, hold on, what's happening here?
better and let me tell me if you've seen me better now still no sound they're still saying no sound oh boy um okay now they're saying it's better good okay and you can hear me now all right great 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 yeah so i was saying that the idea that um mr golden was in parliament and he he raised he raised the objection of the prime minister's wife being speaker of the house so let's break it down in situational ethics this is just my view and it does not need to be adopted by all parties involved but when we when we when we start to think about the the idea of the prime minister and his wife um obviously living together and pretty much running two 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 organs of the state when you're dealing with the how parliament and government works and stuff like that so the situation ethics is this um in law a wife or husband can't testify against each other um they have no duty to um the, the testimony under the evidence act would be problematic now somebody's still saying no sound and somebody's saying they're hearing and so i don't know maybe for those who are here and i'm glad you can hear and everybody else you can re-watch when the time comes but um yeah so the situation ethics of it is this the woman is entitled if she has a capacity to um to naturally be she she's entitled to naturally be the get to the pinnacle of her career based on her capacity if she has any um clearly she has capacity um i've taken that position many 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 times and so she has a right to reach the pinnacle including if she wanted she could be the next prime minister of this country um should should she defer because her husband happens to be um the prime minister at the time should she not be speaker of the house because of that these are questions or situations that um has to we have have to be looked at and so is it is it bad that she has reached her personal um achieved her personal goal by um being someone is a struggling hungry um <laughs> i don't even know that but i just thought about kfc so i'm wondering um if i'm struggling anyway because i'm hungry right so the the idea or the concept is to look at to look whether or not the her personal achievements is a good situation is it good for everybody is it a play coming from a place of love and is it right is it morally wrong um because i can tell you this there is nothing in law that prevents um miss holness from being the speaker of the house um nothing in law if persons aren't happy with it they need to um just <clears throat> they need to simply change the law to make amend uh, to make it clear that um you know the family family members and husbands and wives and stuff can be in government at the same time which to me would be like a breach of constitutionality if, if you were deprived of um opportunities and there would be no equality before the law but i'm just getting that but on a case of morality and certainly this is not a universal morality but a situation of situation morality um if per if she should resign because it's not a look, good look because i put thought to it you know uh the the although it is i said shut up the lady is not troubling the damn the, the damning icy so if you think i should shut up Tima, Timira, the best thing to do is to go to another platform. It's that easy. But anyway, so if 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 it is that one thinks that way, um, then obviously, as you could see, the one side they walked out and they they were upset and they didn't like the outcome. Another thing for me, if you're a simpleton like me and you go over to pink wall from time to time wouldn't it be 
just as how you're saying that all oh, they're together and whatever, whatever, isn't that a a testimony to a strong marriage that you are worried that they can't do their duties because they listen to each other in the household? What if that marriage went sour and the speaker of the house show up and she was no longer in love with her with her husband who happens to be the prime minister and they're going through a very awful marriage would it still be bad for the country but good for the opposition because because if she's mad she's going to do everything in her power to assist the opposition rather than and so bias or bias would be shown either way um one could say one could say um it's a bad situation or one could say it's a good situation the point of me raising this is to deal with situation ethics because every situation dig, um, is, it requires assessment of the given situation. That's pretty much where I am going with it. So there are, there are persons who may very well believe that, um, oh, we shouldn't have this con conversation and and, and all of this. The point I'm making is the raising of the concern is a concern that requires situation ethics. This is simply an example. Um, whether notice what came from it was three things, and I'm going to teach you them right now for the, bit, for the benefit of all, and then we can go back. There is something called fallacies. It is mechanisms or tools used in logic to completely um, to completely distract, deter, remove from salient issues. I'm just going to teach you three of them today, and you put it in context. Because um, for me, I observed, I watch, um, and while it is that. People will take sides. I don't need to take any sides where it's concerned because I don't think it affects my existence one way or another. Save and except for it's uh, all a part of the comical show that goes on with um, Jamaican politics and politics at large. Because here it is, all here it is um, in the Jamaican space. Someone raises an issue about um, the closeness, close relations. And many persons, there are many multiple close relations, but at a part, at a particular, where the, at the climax of power, it becomes a problem. But nobody has a problem with the sons and fathers, um, fathers and daughters, and husbands and wives being in parliament, so long as you don't take the two top positions. But one would wonder if at all the, there is any logic to it. Anyway, the response, however, is the red herring that we should look at. Um, Rather than answering the question, persons walk out. And a good opportunity to, a, a good opportunity would have been to respond to it when it was right to do so and keep it moving. But instead, people who depend on their poli their poli the political electorate to um, educate them to to protect their interests, and certainly you want to learn in the space as as you go on the response is, is not necessarily something that is palatable. So here are the, fall the three fallacies that I'm going to teach you about today. And two of them overlap, but I just want to go slow so people can appreciate where I'm going with it. Um, the, first, the first one would be red herring. This is a logical fallacy in which irrelevant information is presented alongside relevant information distracting attention from the relevant information this may be done intentionally or unintentionally and so a red herring is often used in movies television and literature and naturally in parliament and then people forget um what the salient issues are and so that fallacy it consists of diverting attention from the real issues by focusing instead on one issue having only a surface relevance to the first. So example is this, um, and in this generation, we do it a lot. You go and you say, yo, dad, it's really hard to make a living on, on, on the salary, you know, so you have to keep giving, giving me allowance. Big you come up off of the allowance. 
and stop talk about people big. You have all of the money, so come up off of it. And then father hits you with this. You're lucky, you know, son, because when I was your age, I only made $40 a week. So why are you complaining now? Well, that is what you would call a red herring because it doesn't answer the um the salient issue, the salient point. It doesn't take it any further and it's so distracting. It takes away from the logic and it doesn't address the situation. So naturally, you're saying, I think it's not, Mark Golan is saying, I don't think it's ethical, I don't think it's right. And even if, even if there's no law, there's something that you can do in terms of more morally, ethically, to say that to keep the integrity of the parliament intact, um, we, we should try to remove the, your wife shouldn't be the speaker. What's the response from the other side? Oh, you're a misogynistic person, and you, <coughs> you, 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 you. Why you do that? Why, why, why you do it? I won't use that word, but you know. And then also, this is low. This is low. This is low. But um, is that answering the question? Is it addressing the question? And then walking out. How does that help um, the the morale of the society? How does it? finish it, finish or, or, or end the discussion or the discomfort, if any. Was the raising of that even helpful? Did it detract from the salient points and the important message that he was giving in his speech? Did he throw a red herring? Did he set up a, a smoke screen that prevented um, the people from hearing um, what he was presenting and what what looked to me like a manifesto being put out as to that which he could have done he intends to do when he becomes prime minister that is that is just dealing with one fallacy it's a matter for you um toxic king says i don't think his wife should be head speaker um head speaker would be speaker of the house um and toxic says it's not right that's that's an opinion, um, but not what in law prevents her from being that. Um, she is bright. Um, before before her, um, there was a lighter skinned woman who was a speaker. So I don't. I this is me throwing up the red herrings and the smoke screen. So I don't see why a dark skinned, black skinned, strong black woman can't be speaker of the house and the whole owner just two bad men and they need to take se several seats. Plus. Um, She's his wife, yeah. And it's good to be. It's good to have. It's good to run a man power business. It's good to um to to when you're running a family business that you see a wife at work and you see a wife at home and you see a wife. You know, it's good like that. So in two bad mind take several seats. Yeah. Um. So the smoke screen fallacy now responds to a challenge by bringing up another topic. Now, smoke screens or red herring fallacies mislead with irrelevant, though possibly related facts. So we know we need to make cuts in state budgets, but do we really think we should cut funds for elementary physical education programs? That's that's the kind of that's that's how a smoke screen looks. We know that um we have a, a serious murder rate, but do we really need to build new prisons just because we're locking up people for, for guns and murder? That's, that, 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 that's a smoke screen. Or we know minimum wage is not acceptable, but we have to do, do we really have to raise the salaries for teachers and, and public sector workers? Because we've already raised ours. Those are smoke screens. Um, it's a fallacy, it's distracting. But most of all, another thing that we would have seen in the space, and I need you guys to appreciate that this actually happened, um, is the, hold on, I crave your indulgence. Um, yeah. The the uh, the other thing. Oh come on, man! Yeah, 
the other aspect of it or the other fallacy is the straw man fallacy and that was on clear display yesterday um it occurs when someone distorts their opponent's argument by oversimplifying or exaggerating it for example and then refutes this new version of the argument and it's called a straw man argument so what's an example of a straw man logical fallacy well if a parent tells their child they can't see their friends tonight and the child responds, why do you hate me? Then the child's response is a straw man argument because it creates an exaggeration. Let's put that in context. Mr. Golden, the opposition leader says, listen, um, this is happening, this is happening, but we want to say to you that up in, in assessing the position of the Speaker of the House, who appears to be biased because she won't table bills and it seems now to be inappropriate in hindsight. The response is, get low, yeah, low, low, you low, you low, and then keep my wife's name out your mouth, and yeah, whatever else, and all the things that that came into, into play. These are, is what is known as the straw man fallacy. And based on based on on that, um, what was lacking was at the time when you start to talk about the wife. If you had watched the Oscars, it, there is precedent on how to handle that. So if you sit in and somebody is presenting, and then they start to present and talk about your wife, she doesn't have to have alopecia. She don't have to have it. She don't have to like August. You know what I'm saying? But you still same, you can still get a will treatment and you can get up and go. And go up over there and go. And then after you do that, you say, keep my wife's name out your mouth. And then you give your speech for best actor, because you're gonna win best actor that night. So maybe if you're gonna walk out and you wanna win the Oscar for acting like there's some moral high road that you're taking by leaving out, then you have to double down. I have a box. You see what I'm saying? And then when you do that, and then everybody's like, oh my God, it's parliament tunnel. And then that puts things into context where, 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 where you're dealing with the, the, all of the drama. And, and so, yeah, Lil John had a song, Get Low. Yeah, yeah, Get Low. Yeah, Low or whatever. So we know what's on. Yeah, so, so we know, definitely know what is on the, agenda for the, the the oscar awards where that come but in all of this best supporting role goes to my favorite jp warming todd <laughs> he was most angry and it's not his wife so that was so cool and then, then he was leaving with the with the train of green he was leaving and everybody said but cooper you two them did run you don't lose your job that was low you lose your job quick and somebody they were acting like they were down to other somebody was like, Well, come out, call them don't fire. Where are they? And <laughs> he was looking really, he was looking really JP. I mean, no, like, it was funny. But anyway, so he should get best actor award. So that was messy. Let's put it in context though. But uh, we're at the six o'clock, so I have to do some housekeeping. And it looks a little something like this. Hey, it's all in life. Gotta keep your head up and keep it stride No time for living a lie Gotta keep it moving till you get it right That's right, it's all in life Gotta keep your head up and keep it stride No time to be living a lie You can make it if you try No, I heard them say Life much better, you live it your own way Yeah, so, um Pretty much that's um, where we go or that's what that is in terms of the looking at the situation. So note those fallacies as they occurred yesterday. And while I continue to show um, you guys what the fallacies are, I'm not hearing anybody saying that I should actually repeat <clears throat> what those fallacies were. But just to put things um, or, or to share a perspective or or to, to, to give, to shed some light on 
on what was happening there, one can appreciate a, a, a little better that if we really are assessing um, assessing that situation with the prime minister's wife and her her role, is it, it, it's a little bit more mature consideration. Um, I I think that the what came from it is not uh, not only the law but costs stating that uh, Mark Golden is misogynistic because he raised it and he don't want to see woman elevate and the persons who it's coming from people who would have accepted and ratified men who beat women with chairs and allow those things and and so I just I realize that in the Jamaican space they really don't know what the definition the definition of misogyny is um and so because of that people just throw around big words and they don't know it and it's quite understandable because there are people in the parliament who actually have uh, zero to no education and so they're not the brightest um cohorts and so when they have to deal with um people who are actually on a level where they do understand and they can't take people for either they have to shout you know low and shout things to distract i was asked to repeat the fallacies i have two minutes to do it so fallacy number one is known as the red herring the red herring is simply it consists of diverting attention from the real issue um by focusing instead on one of instead on an issue having only a surface relevance to the first example so the son says dad it's really hard to make a living on my salary and the father says consider yourself lucky son when i was your age i was only getting 40 dollars a week mind you when my father's getting 40 dollars he could have buy a whole apartment building because house was the same as the price of car and all of that anyway the smoke screen fallacy is the next one um so the smoke screen responds to a challenge by bringing up another topic. So smoke screen is also like red herring, but you notice a whole different topic. It misleads um, the smoke screen fallacy mislead with irrelevant, um, though possibly related facts. So, i.e., we know that we need to um, raise the salaries of the. Uh, we know we need to raise minimum wage, but do we really think it's a, an appropriate time to raise um, to raise a minimum wage when we haven't paid our teachers and our public sector workers yet? I, th I think not. And so that is what you call the smokescreen fallacy. The last one is the straw man fallacy. And it occurs when someone distorts their opponent's argument by oversimplifying the or exaggerating it for example and then refutes this new version of the argument so it's called a straw man argument so if parent tells their child they can't see their friends tonight and the child responds why do you hate me the child response is a straw man argument because it creates an exaggeration somebody telling you that you can't do something um i.e just because the leader of opposition says that the prime minister's wife should not be or ought not be the speaker of the house doesn't mean that he's misogynistic simple as that that's the straw man thing or just because he raises an issue that touch and concern and also the red herring is you you raise this thing about law because you don't want them talking about um stuff like maybe maybe the prime minister should actually resign because um he hasn't still has not these declarations have not been certified up to now and we run it into three years or whatever something something of that nature but that's just how it is and kevin keeps saying no no um so just just that ba basically that's that's pretty much um what what the main issue is she is not doing her job so she proves them right um yeah that's that's an opinion that that ne that's not necessarily true by holding the report it means she's doing something she's just doing her job and you just don't like it 
it's two different things. All right, so we're back. We 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 we're back from all that break, commercial breaks, um, housekeeping matters, and that brings us to our second hour. And in dealing with that, here's my thought, or here's what here's what I'll say now. Um, what are the ethical principles of Jesus? I'm, I'm taking it there because we have to look at situation ethics. Um, Jesus is, he dealt with situation ethics. Why? He, he, <laughs> Kezia Couture says, I said, love, sir. He always defends her. Yeah. No. Such is life. Um, yeah. So, what would the what are the ethical principles of Jesus? Well, we start with honesty, humility, authenticity, truthfulness, promise keeping, and sincerity. These are aspects of integrity that Jesus referred to in his teachings and parables. So, when our beliefs words and behaviors are congruent we act as a whole person and do not pretend to to be something that we're that we aren't and so the deeds match our words that's that's pretty much um how jesus looks at it or deals when went about with his teachings so just some selected scriptures i notice uh, i'm not being this isn't Bible studies. This isn't um, schooling. Just remember, um, Jamaica is a Christian society. We actually, um, whether we know it or not, once we get up and talking about that not right and this and this and taking a moral stance, <laughs> you'd be surprised that you're being you're, you're you're dealing with the Jesus teachings a lot more than you know, and it's a it is an innate aspect of of where our conscience and our morality comes from. And the demonstr it's it, the demonstration is it's sound and it's necessary. So here, 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 here it goes. So selected scriptures for, for the purpose of this. We're gonna start with this. So Jesus, here's how he replied. He goes off by saying, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. So you find that Matthew 22, 37 to 39. Now, what's all this laughing going on? Somebody says the... Oh, okay. Good evening, good evening. Kevin says, but is Jesus but is Jesus is fake and morality is false? Uh, that's a question for you. You must know where you get your conscience from. You must know where you get your empathy and your compassion from. Um, and that's the starting point. Um, another scripture is, uh, after this, Jesus traveled from one town and village to another, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom of God. And that's Luke 8.1. Then it says, so I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find knock and the door will be open to you for everyone who asks receives and he who seeks finds and to him who knocks the door is open and that's luke 11 9 to 10. somebody must be saying but oh, what, 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 what with i said where i'm getting where i'm getting so um religious joycelyn says the bottom line is that whenever they are called on to produce the statutory declarations declarations or name the six they get upset well, when I whenever I go to KFC and I order my big six, that the six piece of chicken that I order is there, so I know what I'm getting. Um, it's if you don't know what you're getting, it's called pussy in a bag, and you probably don't. You probably it's probably not a good thing to um, rely on pussy in a bag. What say you about that? Because that's that's my thought on. On, on on all of that now 
See, PMP had a, 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 a very interesting day. So even the animals, you know, they have sense, you know, they question things when it happens. So the photo, the photo that is on the monitor right now, um, you can see a, a dog who clearly is a, a fan of the PNP by virtue of his, his um, orange attire. But very skeptical, you know, because it could very well be that um, although carrots can make you see, um, it is how you apply situation ethics because what you're using the carrot for when you get it or when you're sizing up carrots, um, it can be very, very, very unfortunate. So one would, uh, one would accept why it is that one is so skeptical at the time as to whether or not people are doing the jobs they're doing. But how I see it is um, when you're dealing with the situation ethics and even though you're a, even animals know that they should think about um, in what situation and circumstances things are happening. So it's a matter for you. Your thoughts on the on the 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 pick as it presents itself. One wonders. I will I will pause for effect. <laughs> yeah so so that's that's just one aspect of 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 the many of the many things but what about um what about yeah the the the, the idea or thought you see today you will paint what i have put before you it is all about context it's all about the angles so well, well, as while one would say that the situation ethics is necessary, it is from whatever angle that you are viewing things that are placed before you that will cause you to interpret um, whatever is before you. And so this picture depicts that, that sometimes um, the angle at which you are able to view objects may very well cause you to paint a picture that really isn't so. So it's it's possible that while it is that the, nobody sees anything wrong with um, particular situation, it depends on where, it depends on where, where you're looking at and it depends on how you follow the instructions. It depends on the aspect of what it is and i'll just leave it at that it is a matter for you the again if you look on the monitor this isn't school challenge quiz but it's there for you the angle will determine what it is and so yeah that's it and i, I must say this if you're here for the first time um on the live you like subscribe share um same thing and reggae global radio is the outlet by which we tell people that context do in fact matters the part of it now that i'm showing you why situation ethics having given those photos and about the context the angles what it is that we're actually looking at here here we go now when jesus says that he speaks about integrity it's saying be honest with yourself truthful with others and humble in your relationships with them so jesus asked his followers to choose righteousness and goodness for a responsible moral life his righteousness is manifested by inward dispositions of the heart and moral actions integrity as a core virtue embodies a many faceted combination of character traits honesty humility authenticity truthfulness promise keeping and sincerity are aspects of integrity that jesus referred to in his teachings and parables so when our beliefs words and behaviors are congruent we act as a whole person and do not pretend to be something that we are not so oftentimes people want you to be something that you are not and that that can be problematic in many spaces so your deeds must always match your words. 
in, in including when one looks at it, Jesus' harshest criticism was of the Pharisees whom he observed as hypocrites who had a form of religion, but who lacked compassion for the widow, poor, lame, unprivileged, powerless, and outcast. Even some of the Pharisee and, and Herodias recognized Jesus as a person of integrity when they went to him and said, teacher, we know you are a man of integrity. You aren't swayed by men because you pay no attention to who they are, but you teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. Is it right to pay taxes to Caesar or not? And that was Mark 12, 14. Now, why is this important? Because you can only be who you are and sometimes people are put in positions that they probably ought not to be in and they expect respect and they want you they command the respect and they want this and they want that and the the reality is um if they're not deserving of it and you can only be who you are you will just be truthful and sometimes the truth be, the truth is the truth and is not an offense it's offensive yes but we must remember that it's not an offense and that 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 is a simple re, um, reality in relation to that now what about um He then challenges, right, those who follow him to be righteous and he adheres to moral and ethical principles in their everyday lives. The person of integrity seeks to do what is right and good and avoids doing that which is harmful. Well, at that season, and this is, this is scripture again, Jesus went on the Sabbath day through grain fields and his disciples were hungry and began to pluck ears and to eat but the pharisees when they saw it said unto him behold thy disciples do that which is not lawful to do upon the sabbath but he said unto them have ye not read that david did when he was hungry and they that were with him how he entered into the house of god and ate the show the showbread which is which it was not lawful for him to eat, neither for them that were with him, but only for the priests. Huh. So when you read this, the inspired narrative of Matthew Gospel, um, the record at 12, 1 to 4, there are those who employ the narratives as biblical precedent or the philosophy of situation ethics. Well, situation ethics is the notion that there are no absolute rules. And we, we said this again, but I'm repeating it because I know there are some people who just came in. And the, it governs right and wrong. Rather, all human activity is determined by the situation of the moment. Supposedly guided by love alone, the aforementioned case regarding Israel's great king is cited as authoritative, authoritative for this concept of human conduct. So on a certain occasion, David and his men were hungry. And you can find this at Samuel 1, 21 to 6, um, 21 verse 6. In a time, um, 1 Samuel, that's not Samuel 1, 1 Samuel 21, 6. Um, in a time of crisis, they resorted to eating the sacred bread that was served by, for the priest. This act was not lawful, but the desperation of the hour justified the conduct, so we are told. Um, so it is alleged that Jesus himself cited with approval what David did. And supposedly Christ endorsed David's practice of situation ethics and thereby justified the law-breaking conduct of his own disciples. So you there you would have heard i know we, we live in a world where we hear things um situation ethics pharaoh had a, a, a absolute law that if you strike a an egyptian and they died the eye for an eye you know i go you would be put to death moses did it but he loved he loved moses and in that situation he didn't put him to death he said you know what i'm going to banish you for 40 years and and go to the wilderness because I simply won't kill you. That is an application of situation ethics. And because of that, we are certain that absolute law is something that we ought to 
not partaking. That's why in terms of me, my position on mandatory minimum sentences, I think it's ludicrous. And I think it's one of the reasons why crime is actually increased because persons who don't want to succumb to the effect of a mandatory minimum, i.e. if you're found in possession of a firearm, rather than saying to the police, aha, you got me, you're going to say, you know something, I did my God for dead come and I'm going to sit down for 15 years. And so that simple possession turns into a shootout and that shootout leads to death and all kind of madness comes from it because badly written laws. And so as legislators, we don't think about situations and we don't give judges, when we take away the, the ability for judges to deal with cases on a situation ethics basis, in the positive way to ensure that whatever the best amount of benefit that can that can come from a situation that it actually arises is is takes place but no that's that's not the unfortunately the, the situation at hand so valerie watson said mr isad how would you apply situation ethics with ari i don't even know who's ari or ARI. Somebody have to help me with that. See, you don't have to teach me, you know, can't assume I know everything. Um, what I wanted to say, though, is um, I'm waiting on Valerie to update me or somebody to help me who, who ARI is. Um, the, the, the next aspect that I wanted to say, though, is no matter how people felt about, um, no, notice how things happen in real time. We're in, oh, so I said, what, what, how apply situation ethics to with Ari? Okay, okay, okay. You have to see with me. Um, yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. No, 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 no. <laughs> Yo, you know, to put me on the spot, you know. <laughs> wow, anyway, anyway, listen, listen, be able to self. The thing I was saying is, no matter how. The, the one one of the things that I love about Jamaica, so I'm putting this in context. Um, one of the, the the thing that I love about Jamaica is it's so entertaining. Um, no matter how ludicrous, no matter how obs, ob, I don't even know absurd Parliament can be, it has never gone to the level like like we're saying. Oh. Miss Hold, not we, but it is being said that Miss Holness should resign. And somebody said, ha ha, Aristotle. Because I'm thinking it's Aristotle. I'm like, but what? I never spoke to Aristotle before, but now I know Ari is, yeah. Thanks for that. Um, yeah, no matter how you think about Jamaica, the beautiful thing about Jamaica is the dynamics that takes place because um, the longest serving black um, politician in the UK is experiencing racism and there are persons who think it's quite fine so while we are crying oh misogyny and putting smoke screens red herring and straw men up 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 to the table by simply making reference to um what could what could be a moral or a ethical um disposition certainly not a legal one we, we, we see racism still in 2024, disrespect and, and how that, without any regard for how a serving member of parliament who happens to be black would feel. But then in a situation like that, we, that would also be what you'd call, not straw man, but the, a situation where we say, well, we're using, um, not red herring either, but rather, a smoke screen because me comparing our parliament with what is happening with racism would be saying well is you're lucky say he wasn't being racist to her and, and was just simply pointing out something but in my mind i'm just saying that we ought to look at situations and assess it for instance in in in, in today in Jamaica, this is current affairs. Jamaica has accepted um, Haitian children who are disabled, given the situation what's happening in Haiti. Now, that's something admirable. That's something 
that's a humanitarian effort and america rejected them but jamaica accepted them but then one has to look at it and understand that jamaica received money and it may very well be a part of um the the agreement for the money that they received i don't know but juxtapose that with even as we're saying this there are places in the world for instance in the gaza situation where all oh, so many children have been brutally murdered and they call it airstrikes and they call it attacks but they don't call it murder and <laughs> nobody's going away for life nobody's being prosecuted nobody's being labeled as the worst of the worst but um situation ethics would see that um what's happening in that region is a fight for um so sovereignty and, and and state recognition and a, a resolution of who ought to be in the correct place and who is to be what i'm not be i'm only raising these things to show you as a matter of what situation ethics look like because there can there are people who are saying there is justification for what is actually happening at the time um versus um versus some some other situation where they would say that people in jamaica are barbaric but are we really barbaric in comparison to what we see happen in other places in the world also situ situation ethics was used when the atomic bomb was was um was was deployed or or was used on here at hiroshima and the the distinguished gentlemen um in those rooms the scientists and everybody said there was no other option but to use it at the time so they could win a war and the situation then was just and moral now what one has to wonder where that is concerned and yeah big up mustard seed because they are the ones who are taking care of the um the haitian children that have reached and and let me just be clear it's a positive thing you know I can't think of a situation where anybody could object to um, a nation taking in um, children of any race, any color, any, any, so there could have been 50 healthy Haitian children. The children of the world, a children of any country is chill, are children of the world, citizens of the world, and they should be taken care of. And that's, that's something that we, we need to, as a world not even as a nation the world at large globally we need to make um room for that in in terms of governance to make sure that children are, are protected so that they can become the best versions of themselves that's the idea of situation ethics trying to do good um trying to spread love in such a way that um it's beneficial to the future of of, of a nation yeah so that's that's certainly my thought um on on that topic and, and on situation ethics so really and truly we can now kind of see if we can vibe on 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 the issues or the topics and see how you feel about uh, all that i would have just said um, the three fallacies and the use of situation ethics Jesus's position on situation ethics um and he had many other things like he chose who he was to heal um he chose Lazarus um you know a rich man Lazarus would reach heaven and it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than a rich man to enter into the gates of heaven um these these things are all situational ethics um demonstrated through the life and teachings of jesus are you so i'm i'm raising that so we can have an understanding whether that is something because it's also even how how we love how we hate how we criticize um how we become if you're politically charged how you're how you are exercise morality through party lines you're silent if your party does something but you speak out and this whole new this new concept where um even young people can be disrespectful to old disrespectful to old people in the name of calling themselves a group 
of young Jamaicans or whatever they call themselves and say, oh, you should resign and, and love to tell people to resign um, without looking at the effect of resignation, um, without understanding the impact and the implications of, of, of boorish, um, rude statements to people because of your because of joining in 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 party lines um i only raise that aspect of it because individually especially when persons group up together they they group up like a hyenas in a pack so they don't have lion mentality and usually as you know if if, if the lion is the superior animal the hyenas certainly are the mongrels of the of the jungle but at the same time they they pack together and they can do a lot of damage to a, a, a lion pride so i i raise that to say that individually the, thou must be right within and if you're right within you 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 can if you're not right within you can um do a lot of damage to your society so you have to get right with him. You have to anchor yourself on, on, on God and appreciate what situation ethics is. Because if you do justice, if you do justice in every situation and you're doing right, then people can't be mad at you and people can't be wrong. And that's how you march to a better society. And the criticisms is almost like people must never forget where they're coming from. Because if you if you forget where you're coming from, you'll condemn your own just so that you you don't have to remind yourself of who you are or where you're from and so people from humble beginnings and people just i think people from third world nations should all be humble and i think that that is an aspect that we need to get to so that we're not disrespectful and 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 rude all the time no i said has not called anybody mongrels i said hyenas are the mongrels of the jungle packed people people who pack up that's what i said so yeah um so once again context matters and um this is a space where english language is as you should have a dictionary with you so that you can interpret um the meanings and definitions so um you don't take it and run with it and say oh i said call somebody a mongrel i said hyenas are the mongrels of the jungle and if you don't know what a jungle is, um, Disney has made a movie and they do remakes. It's called The Lion King and it's in cartoon form. So it's easy to digest so people can have a, a, a understand the simplicity that I'm, I'm laying out in terms of um, Simba and, and how that whole situation and how when a weak lion teams up with the hyenas, the effect of it, the entire um pride suffers the entire jungle the entire nation suffers um it's so simple so i and you can use google if you don't have a dictionary but that is important because i am finally understanding and it took me a good it took me a a, a while to appreciate and to understand how it is that it's so easy for people to misinterpret how it is that even when things are clear people say let me give clarity to things that are clear it is the most interesting thing how people can conflate issues and people can use the, the straw man fallacies and the red herring because i am talking about jesus and talking about situation ethics and using examples and somebody said of all the things i said people hold on to the the um analogy and the explanation between lions and hyenas uh, hyena and lion do not live in the jungle context matters oh wow thank you i'll remember i'll remember that because i don't live in the jungle either you hear anyway um so that is that so we can now have these the, the conversations and you tell me your thoughts i will be reading the comments um mel bad who gave a joke yeah so i'm 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 <laughs> yeah and i promise um when it tease me about my technology but my technology good you know 
And I don't know what I go on from the technology today come in technology good. Yeah, I'm so mad at this. Let me let me let me let me try something. Tell me something. Um, are you are you actually here? Are you hearing me now? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me? You live in the concrete jungle that Bob Marley sing, sing about. I don't live in Trench Town though, so that's that's a no. Yeah, can can you hear me or my sound gone? Help me out right here. Seven laughing. You're not hearing me? No, they're not hearing me. I know why. Please freeze up. Freeze up. Freeze up. Anyway, please. Right, so um as I would have said from time to time, that's pretty much um, the way how we would have to look at the situations as they arise. So anyway, um, Yeah, am am I being heard? Never fix what is not broke. <laughs> what did what did they do to Isa? <laughs> Hold on. So still still echo. There's an echo. I really what I was trying to do was to introduce to you um, my lovely voice, but I don't know if you're hearing me though. Okay, so you're hearing and seeing me. All right. Um, who do I sound like right now? Who do I sound like? Somebody tell me, please. Who's saying, oh, no? Uh, Max City, why are you saying, oh, no? Because I want to take this time to put a face to a familiar voice. Yes, finally. So you see, with situation ethics, what what the Rasta boy was saying, you should listen to him because he doesn't really know what he's talking about. So what I'm going to do is drop a video tomorrow by surprise. And I want to talk about what happened in Parliament. Because you see, Marky G and you see what Andrew did, uh, Everything is going to come to book when the election happens. And I just wanted to know that. So, for all the people who were supporting me. <laughs> yes. So, it's, it's finally been re revealed. What you, you are tuned in to Sir B. <laughs> and, it, 
Anyway, so I just had to do that. Um, it's hilarious. Um, so to conclude for today, I just think that we are to use or to exercise blessed existence. What have I done? Reggae Global Radio, if, if, if you're wondering, I know that um, you guys sometimes you go on YouTube and stuff like that. So it is, it is all in fun and humor. We, we, we should always strive to ensure that no matter what the topic is, laughter is a part of um, our existence. Laughter is, is, to, is there to ensure that we stay afloat. And so in, in, in doing that, we find ourselves that we can find ourselves at a jerk center <laughs> and that pi the, the picture in the picture certainly I've used it before, but it says you've got to wee wee again. You've done this all the way home. So you have an idea of who that is, the, the, the pigs. This little piggy went, went to market and this little piggy stayed home. So that's really what that is. And I find it all the time to be hilarious and I'm just sharing that with everybody as usual. Um, the, let me see, what, what else do I have here? Um, laughter, heal the mind, body and soul. Yes, all, all the time. And remember, remember also that when it comes to situation ethics, because I'm asking you as we, as we go out, um, about our lives, especially, you know, till I see you guys next week. Um, <laughs> what about, what is it? How, we're the name dropping a lot around here, you know, and I'm not going to call some of these names because they're giving yourself too much trouble. What, what, where him just say, fly over enough people's head. Ah, really? Am I, am I guilty of doing that, speaking for people to not understand because that's never my intention? Um, I did realize something, though, is taking a different approach and using the situation ethics for once. Um, we should not rule so much or judge with a heavy hand. We are to take the, the situations as they come so that we can take the people as we find them and it's through it's through that it's through that exercise that we we have growth. Growth is, is so important. This ain't Texas. We ain't hold on. Lay your cards down, 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 down. Yeah. Anyway, um, it says, "Why four pigs? Is it Cartel and his friends? Oh wow, wow, million vivo. That's so interesting. I like that one." Anyway, the what was the name of the person? Yeah. Um, oh yeah, I know. Here it is. It's the wrong thing I do. The yeah here. This here. Oh, this is needed open. No, 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 no. Yeah, hold on. Yeah, my bad. Yeah. Anyway, so when will? Okay, so these these are the questions that that I get. So I'm go, I'm going to answer these questions because I think I have ended in terms of speaking about the situation ethics so i'm going to answer the questions somebody says um when is cartel touching road and i would have done so in social spaces i would have made it clear that um the king has not yet signed the perfected order and we're waiting we are awaiting that so i hope that was helpful the 
Yes, I hope I answered your question where that is concerned. I am answering the questions now and I'm looking closely at the questions as they're being presented to me. Um, somebody says, how long will it take? I've always asked, how long does it take to get to the center of a Tutsi roll pop? Um, it has never been answered. That question has been asked from as young till now. Thank you, Valerie. Valerie. Mm hmm Oh, and then somebody says KC, JC, or Calabar. None of the above. I went to Meadowbrook and them not had no track team. You know, I think one person from Meadowbrook can run up and down, but I don't want to worry. come at me, but I saw it go. Um, yeah. So I'm assuming that champs is going on, but when you went to a school like the school I went to, um, those things don't work in 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 your existence it says i said the local media did not highlight you speaking at the privy council also last year when we got good news only fox 5 covered it the local media did not either yeah that's and that, that's understandable um everybody has to protect their sponsors and sponsorship so they have to do what they have to do um yeah so usually, when you want the news, you go to Reggae Global Radio, you go to Context Matters, Isa Buchanan, and of course, um, Lisa Evers, big up yourself, you have been um, very accurate in reporting unbiased news. Yeah, that's that. Mm-hmm. We're doing a whole lot of dreaming, you know, and then is me get cussed when me talk about St. Thomas and my grandmother come from St. Thomas. Is your life funny? Well, I tell you. <laughs> I can't read some of these comments. I'm, I'm on live radio. I have to behave with myself, please. Um, let me see what's going on here now. Yeah, so I'm now being asked, how is Cartel? Cartel is great. Cartel is excited. Cartel is looking forward to um, his release. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was, I believe me, um, I don't even want to, I'm literally afraid to, to touch this thing now. Um, I want to open the phone line, but um, it's like it's not happening. <clears throat> I, I don't. I don't know. And I, I could try, but with the new t new technology comes. Um, you even know what I'm call this. This. Right, so we could try. Y'all want to try? Let me try. It's a learning experience, you know, so let me try. That's a number there on the screen, so let me see if somebody's going to call me. I tell you this, if somebody call me and this thing work, you know, I don't know how I go contain myself. Do you think he will be out before summer? I like these questions. Listen, um, I don't have the answer to none of the, none of those questions. I can tell you about ticket prices if you want, um, but and answer those other questions. All right. Yes, hello. See, um, I'm here trying, and I'm not hearing you, so I guess it's not working. <laughs> yeah, I think so. I know so. It does, it does not work. I hear you, but they're not. They're not hearing you. Are you hearing my caller? Hello. Oh man. So yeah, that's my point. So not hearing it literally. Um. Let me try something. Yeah, go ahead. Caller, caller. Yes.
Mm -mm. So that, that's the point I'm making. So this, this thing is an epic fail because once again, I'm not hearing you. And um, yeah. Yeah, so I never try. This thing. All right. Caller, caller, caller. Who is this? Hello? Yes. Um, you calling me uh, while I'm whilst I'm on my show? Yes. Right. So I'm I'm glad that you call. Except that guess what? Um, it's not going across, or it's not it's not working out. So we will have to speak after. All right. All right. Yeah. So 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 unfortunately, the technology precedes me. So or it 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 bothered on me. So, sorry to say. Oh, you are hearing the person, but it needs volume. Turn up the volume for the incoming call. Put a mic on the phone. I'll deal with that next week. Believe me, believe me. Or, or use the speaker. That's what I'm going to do next week. Because I don't... Um, I tried it out earlier, and it just never worked out. Or maybe I was... <coughs> Spending too much time on this aspect of it, and then it just pretty much um, stopped me from doing the most important thing. So, um, yeah, so that's that's gonna be a, a next week thing. But for those of you, for those of you, <laughs> what was your question? Um, Pepper seed, what was your question? You may need your fans. Let me know what the question is. I can do it. Yeah, and I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna get it right by next week. I have the technology now. Um. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> look, look at them having me. Okay. Oh, my bad. Ready? This, this is for um. This is for. Anyway, let me just do it. Look, I am your father. All right, um, so once again, um, thanks everybody for tuning in to Reggae Global Radio, ISAT Buchanan 5419, Context Matters, that is the show. Um, we spoke today about situation ethics, and we had good conversation where that was concerned. I really think that we brought it home, especially when we talk about, we spoke about the fallacies. I just want to put it in context that one Personally, um, I'm of the view that persons are to try to reach to the pinnacle of their career and nothing should prevent them from doing that. Persons might be um, not in agreement with me, but I've said in many spaces that I, I personally don't have a problem with Juliet Holness to being the speaker of the house. Um, I've seen other people do it. Other people be the speaker of the house and be less um, effective than she is. Um, notwithstanding, one must not be upset that when questions are raised in terms of morality and optics is everything, justice must be seen as done, even if it is not done. The appearance is what is of utmost importance. And if, if on an optics level something doesn't look right, then sometimes people have to step back. But it's just a matter for you, and people have to, are to have mature consideration and conversations around it, especially where it affects the nation, um, especially where it's a situation that it might be that persons are acting bias, and the, the, the genesis of the bias um, in the public space, it could have been that where, because of where you share your bed, where you lay your head, that might be problematic, and people are to think about it without thinking that, um, where the ad hominem aspects of it is, is, is something that to, to be entertained. So I'm just putting that out there. It's a matter for you. And um, as we continue to grow and as we continue to learn, we need to do that. Somebody says, um, but Kea David, you really, you're entitled to your opinion and I'm happy for you. I saw it, but you, you get no forward around here. Um, 
So I said, are you saying otherwise she is fulfilling her duties as outlined as a speaker of the house, um, putting all things aside? I'm, and I'm saying, have anybody presented any evidence that she has not been her duty? That's really what it is. So I don't take emotional stances on things. Um, she has not been less effective than the former speaker of the house. And she says that she is following a report that was She's following recommendations from the Attorney General. The Attorney General, who is Derek McCoy, he's a most erudite um, legal mind. Um, I think the issue is people haven't seen what that um, recommendation is, but until you see it, you can't say she's not doing her job. So I don't know how to answer beyond that. Mm -hmm. Um. Someone says, I have a problem with a person of higher positions not following the rules in leadership. I have the same problem that you have. And that's ironic because it's so many of them that are in that situation where they're not doing what they're supposed to do and getting paid. And that's the situation or the ethical aspect ramifications that we are to be more concerned with rather than um, the simplicity of um, where people sleep. Yeah, so that's my that's that's my take on, on on that situation. So as we proceed to give you what you need, I'm gonna say that that would be the the show for today. Um, I'm gonna tell you this, and I was very entertained. Um, you guys really made me laugh today, and I'm 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 impressed by that. And as we continue to grow. Um, Patience. Remember, justice rush is cr justice crush, and time is the master. God on time. You should adopt that in m mantras in your life. And so, until next week, context matters every single day. And let me tell you why context matters. In all honesty, because you matter, and when you matter, I matter, and once we matter. Context matters. Yeah, that sounds good, though. So I am going to see you guys next week. That's right. Let's go. It took some time to understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just what it takes to be a man. Uh -huh. Now it seems each day. You learn something to make a better way I growing up ain't just a phase It's reality And sometimes it's hard To face the world with your head screwed on, on But in time you'll see It comes naturally Like the hurt and the pain It's a part of the game It's all a part of life To laugh and to cry that's right, it's all in life Gotta keep your head up and keep it stride No time for living a lie Gotta keep it moving till you get it right That's right, it's all in life Gotta keep your head up and keep it stride No time to be living a lie You can make it if you try No, I heard them say Life much better, you live it your own way And when it gets hard to face the world with your head screwed on, on Just tell yourself you can And that's when you'll understand that the hurt and the pain It's a part of the game It's all a part of life To laugh and to cry That's right It's all in life Gotta keep your head up and keep your stride No time Living a lie, gotta keep it moving till you get it right. That's right, it's all in life. Gotta keep your head up and keep your stride. No time to be living a lie. You can make it if you try. You gotta keep on moving on. Don't let no one stand in your way. You gotta keep on pressing on. As we pray for better days, keep it moving. Moving to the next. When they try to bring you down. To the next level when they come around That's right It's all in life Gotta keep your head up and keep your stride No time for living a lie Gotta keep it moving till you get it right That's right It's all in life Gotta keep your head up and keep your stride No 
long time Tell me living a lie You can make it if you try Just keep your head up, yeah Just keep your head up, yeah Gotta keep your head up, yeah Cause everything's gonna be Cause everything's gonna be alright Cause everything's gonna be alright